Okay, finally back with the final chapter of this LP about fucking time. This has taken far, far too long. And this is chapter two, Massacre's End. Probably, you know, a hint at how this game is likely to end in a fucking massacre. Because it's not like every other stage hasn't already been the end of a massacre. So here we see Bianca growing a pair and refusing to give the Queen the legendary core stone. Core stone for the legendary stone. However, she appears to have all the situational awareness of a 1930s film heroine because two guards just walked up completely behind her without her even fucking noticing. Still, she is showing more of a spine than for. I have to question the sanity of Queen Margarita she of the booze-like name, because she's used Bianca to utterly annihilate everyone else's guards, including the King's elite guards, and she thinks that two of her friends are going to do a goddamn thing to the greatest raving sociopath in the country after the Queen herself. This is generally not a smart way of going about things, and we already know that traitors are hunted down because they fucking murdered Cecilia. You know, trap-wise, this isn't going to be a particularly interesting video, and this is actually about the third time I've had to record this stage, and I've gotten very, very lazy about beating it. You're going to see me running a lot of repeated semi-combos and a lot of dirty tricks to just get this out of the way as easily as possible, because after two complete fuck-ups, one of which I still cannot explain, yeah, I really don't feel like being innovative or intelligent about this shit. So we're going to use the vacuum floor, which, now that it's been upgraded somewhat, and once again I skipped the trap upgrading, is possibly the most broken fucking ability I have access to. Because it's an AOE that lets me do things like send two people flying into giant bladed fans, which I covered in blood already and promised to be far more so by the end of this shit. So as we see right there, they've recovered just enough to get sucked back into it. And the higher levels of the vacuum floor, as you've seen, have a range of about three to four squares in every direction. If you're in a room large enough to stay out of the way yourself, they can be used to just lock down half the space very simply. Um, you'll notice I'm getting fuck all arc from these trap combos because I'm reusing exactly the same set up in order to save time, effectively. And here we have Antonora who will come in next. She's a white mage, a healer, so... Bitch gotta die. She will make the rest of the game so, so much fucking harder if I don't horrendously murder her first. I know this is in complete contravention of the Geneva Convention of, you know, not murdering medics, but... Fuck that shit. Seriously, if it heals enemies, if it does not somehow contribute to me killing enemies, it goes on the high priority death list. So, again, same combo again, which I've used about four times in a row now, just to get rid of this son of a bitch. I'm at the end of the game, I don't care about arc totals or combo or anything like that. I just want to ensure everything is as stone fucking dead as possible. move our trap combos now, and you'll see me setting them up here, and I should have paid more attention to setting this up, because I've set this up in the wrong corner of the room right here, and it's up in the far northeast corner, I need it in the southwest corner, in order to, you know, cover the fucking doorway, and not let my enemies walk right in unopposed, which I've just realised about now when I was recording it. Luckily for me, um, the white mage is very defensive. She won't assault by herself. She will try and hide behind other people. Um, this is actually what's keeping me from being in a lot of shit right now. Because she's backed off to go get reinforcements and therefore can't exploit the fact that I do not have a workable trap combo set up right now. So we're going back to an old favourite for this one. Vacuum floor, drop the flare rock, use the thunderball to push the flare rock out into the enemies, which will hope, which because it's an explosive flare rock, will launch them up and 
into the rest of the Thunderbolt, which, if I'm timing it right, should actually then launch them round into the Flying Bandsaw. Um, I didn't manage it in this video, but if you time it right, it's possible to use that Rolling Bandsaw to then drop them down on top of one of the Spike Pits. Very effective combo if you can time it right. It's very difficult, though, because obviously you need to hit them in exactly the right spot so that they go off the saw and onto one of the spike pits. And of course, since the saw moves, you see me deliberately not taking out Godfrey there. Um, he's immune to magnet traps. So there goes Antonora flying and right into the saw blade. So she's taken care of. Unfortunately, I did take a hit from Godfrey right there. And yes, we have sinned many, many times. It is, in fact, killing us right now. And as the game has not ceased to push out, anyone who uses the traps is cursed and will eventually die if they do not keep killing other people. So, Godfrey to stop. Pyrazin is the next enemy. Pyrazin is a pain in the ass combination with Godfrey. They are both immune to so many goddamn traps. They cannot be vacuum trapped. They're both immune to magnetism. Um, Godfrey floats. He's immune to a lot of ground-based traps. And they've got a... Godfrey, as you saw, does a fuck ton of damage every time he hits you. And Pyrazin will suck you in with his own version of the magnet traps. Um, real pain in the ass, though. So we're going to have to sit here and sort of wait in ambush. As you saw, Pyrrhus knocked off about a... Sorry, Godfrey knocked off about a quarter of my health. Without even doing anything. That cold arrow there is purely to stun him. I was hoping that if this slowed him down for a bit, he would walk in at the same time as Godfrey. And then I would be able to, you know, just tag them at the same time. Save running around trying to dodge the two. Hasn't quite worked out that way. And as you can see, I've missed with the Thor hammer right there. He was just a little bit too far away. So we're going to need to change shift. We're going to need to move all our trap combos. Go back to, again, the old favourite, the grab, drop, push combo. And, yeah, it's kind of generic, but fuck it, it works. So there's a giant iron grate with spiked you know, rails right there, and I cannot possibly bring myself to not make use of such a combo when it's there as we see Pyrazin roaming towards us, right into the bear trap. There's the flare rock comes down. Thunderball goes out, and he hits the wall on the way out, and does not go into the Iron Grate. I'm tremendously disappointed here, as you see Godfrey desperately trying to fuck me up with that bomb attack of his. And there's Pyrazin's magnetism trick. Unfortunately missed him he didn't walk in front of the bear trap, so I had to improvise and sort of put him into the grate. I'm not surprised he can't feel anything. It looks like his waist has been chopped in half, and there's two or three litres of blood on the ground. He should be in fatal shock by now. Um, and here we have another of the Hell Knights. We haven't actually seen one of these in a tremendous number of levels. Their main ability is that after taking damage, they activate sort of a hyper-defense ability, and then only have... Well, sorry, only take one or two damage from each hit for a while, vast to reduce damage and until they recover and go through it. They also walk, so they will come through the door and then jump into the middle of the screen. As you see Godfrey getting stomped on by the giant iron grate right there. And he's down. No, not good enough in the least. Poor human. Okay, so we're down to the two last enemies of the main part of the stage. Gandalf the Hell Knight. And yes, yes and Miguel. Who, hilariously enough, is actually piss-weak compared to a lot of the enemies in this stage. He's a little bitch. But having the pair of them together is bad news because the Brutes aren't exactly the easiest enemy to deal with. They're not hard. Like they're not Hell Knight level difficult, but they are enough of a pain in the ass. So I'm going back to fall back on the age-old combo of getting them in the middle here and dropping a pair of giant pillars on them. Because Hell Knights are not immune to the vacuum floors the way the two other enemies are. And Miguel, being just a regular brute rather than any sort of special enemy class, is exactly as vulnerable to it as every other brute. Which is to say, really fucking vulnerable. 
but we've got plenty of time before they actually rock up. The other reason I'm doing this is they're walking together, more or less, and they're coming at me from the same position, which means I can get them both at once. And with the white mage down, if, the more I can whittle them down as a pair, the easier it's going to be. The less time I'm going to have to spend dodging and you know, avoiding things. Though we're going to have a bit of a problem because one of them's going to walk in a couple of seconds for the other. And fortunately it's Miguel that's going to jump in first. So by the time he reaches about halfway through, um, the Hell Knight should warp in. And man, that is the campest possible way of describing an evil laugh I've seen in a long time. Unfortunately, not going to get the Hell Knight with this one. But Miguel can suck it. One pillar. Two pillars. Two pillars. Uh, uh, uh. Horrible count impersonation right there. Um, for those keeping track at home, I think we're up to about 72 dead enemies in the game so far. Um, something like that. And now we're running. We're going back to the gear room with all its giant, grinding, horrific gears of pain. Because it's got all these traps in the center that I can actually make use of with my standard boring old traps on those. Anyway, so the usual setup here. And um, in the hopes that it will send them into the giant grinding gear. Because the Hell Knight's damage reduction ability takes a little bit of time to trigger. It does not immediately go off after being hit the first time, it only goes off when the combo ends. So if you're very quick about comboing, you can actually bring them down you know, quite rapidly. I have seen videos of people drop them in a single combo. Very difficult to set up, but it can be done. So here we go. Unfortunately, not where I wanted him to land. And here comes Gandalf to make my life fucking shit. -ass. Fortunately, I'm not going to need to reset the traps. They're both going to be in more or less the right spot to get caught by them. And did activate that a little bit too soon. Unfortunately, Miguel got hit by the giant thing I didn't want to get. And I took too long to hit Gandalf because... Well, not because, because I fucked up the timing on it. And as a result, he only took two points of damage from that entire combo. This is bad. I need to get out of this room and get some distance. And some of you may remember this room. It is the bell tower. It is awesome. Because there is a giant bell to drop on people and it's hard to go past that. You see I've pretty much you see how much of the room the vacuum truck can lock down there. And you can see I've pretty much phased out using the standard bear trap in a lot of situations because it is just so much more flexible. The reason, and for those of you playing at home, the reason I'm rolling the rock into the Hell Knight rather than just dropping it on him, and I think he just walked into one of the gears in there, um, is because if you drop it directly on him and he's not stunned, he will actually catch it and like, throw it to the side, and thus negating quite a bit of the damage it can do because if a flare rock drop directly on you is a two-hit combo in itself. lands on you and then it explodes for more damage. Whereas if I can roll it on top of him, I'll only get one hit worth of damage, but I'll actually get that damage. Which is very important with Hell Knights because you can't afford to really whistle them down. You've got to hammer them with big individual combos. Otherwise, they just wreck your shit. As you see, his rush attack there miss horribly. So we're going to vacuum floor him. The Hell Knights fight it, but they're not immune to it. So we're going to drop a giant bell on him. Down he goes. Flare-Rock goes down, and it goes into him. Roughly about half his health in that combo there. As you can see though, they have a lot of health. They have three full bars. And the, we're going to take the hidden door, run like fuck, and find ourselves right back in the room where it all began. For those of you paying attention, this is the dungeon room, the very first trap room in the game from stage one where you are menaced by the two enemies and all you have as I remember correctly is a bear trap and I think a push wall or a thought or a pendulum I'm not sure which pendulum I think and once again I've got myself turned around set the traps up in the wrong spot and I'm going to need to adjust them because I'm going to 
Yeah, I need to do just this so I can actually get them into, or get our Hell Knight friend into the Iron Maiden. I'm not entirely certain how effective an Iron Maiden is going to be against a suit of armor with no flesh. Presumably not very. But the vacuum floor's range is just short enough that I can hide in the corner and activate it safely. And since he'll warp right into the middle of the room, he's going to be right on top of it. I activated that too early, however. He isn't immune to those things during his sort of intro animation. And he's into the Iron Maiden. Not enough, however, to kill him. But he's going to stagger out and collapse. And there, that is his super angry special ability. He gets fast and he gets temporarily immune to damage. However, it doesn't last very long and he's still within range of the vacuum floor. So, fuck him. Back in the Iron Maiden it goes. Again, you see drastically reduced number of arc I get off those combos. And I have no idea how exactly one kills a Hell Knight, but apparently we just managed it. So our final foe in the game is Queen Margarita herself. Margarita, I'm still calling her Margarita for the human value. We're going to stick with exactly the same trap combo as I've been using on the Hell Knight. Um, purely for symbolic and thematic reasons. I want this game to end the way it did, with us stuffing a horrible little bitch into the Iron Maiden. And because it's almost identical to the actual trap combo I used. And Queen Margarita is still insisting on being a bitch about this whole thing. However, she's purely a ranged spellcaster. She's got fuck all close in ability. Not a lot of health or damage resistance either. As you can see, that one combo right there was just about fatal. She's actually a very challenging boss fight if you let her start attacking you she can combo you to death with one luckily placed attack. And still alive despite being shoved in the Iron Maiden. And the Iron Maiden getting very bloody now. As you saw, she was going to hit him with attack, but we've got the full-on combo going here. She can't do anything about it. Into the Iron Maiden. Brilliant three-point shot right there. And it ends as it began with us horribly murdering somebody who had it coming with an Iron Maiden. Because fuck yeah, I am. And we skip to the final cinematic, which is actually somehow moved us back to the furnace room in the middle of the fucking castle. Um, Bianca showing a complete lack of genre awareness here. And there goes the core stone. It has been destroyed. And Mar Margareta showing why she was never qualified to rule a fucking kingdom throwing herself upon the funeral pyre of her hopes and dreams. And Bianca is pissed as hell as we get a nice little down-tempo finishing music. And yes, with the core stone destroyed, um, there will be no chance of going and fixing any of this shit. So Cecilia and Albert and all of her family will have to stay dead. And Christina, with a truly typical and accurate point, everyone in this game is going to die eventually. Um, the sole named survivors at this point are Christina and Bianca. Bianca, of course, will eventually succumb to the curse unless she keeps killing people. So, survivors at this point, effectively, Christina. Out of all the named cast in this game, we're getting one person with the actual ending that isn't just, oh, you'll die next year instead of today. Fuck me, that's a bit of a downer. Bianca swearing to carry on Albert's wishes with the little time she has left. Although Albert was a bit of a violent bloke at times, so she may actually live for a fair bit longer if she keeps killing people. And that's the print that's the other named survivor, who is a pawn of the Queen and actually performing missions for the Queen despite being about seven years young. So we have three survivors, one of which is doomed to die, one of which has a permanent penance for all the kidnapping she performed and one of which has the misfortune to be reminded that she was the daughter and witting tool of a complete psychotic bitch. Um, I don't know what else to say to that. That's just... Fuck me, that's a bit of a downer ending, but that's deception for you. 
Um, I'll just say that there are four endings to this game. You won't see the actual screen for that because I've cut it out. Um, three, four, the last one which I've got is only accessible from this path. And the other three are only accessible from the other path. The single branching path we made was deciding to go with Cecilia back in stage 13 or so. All three endings are accessible if you refuse to go with her. Except for the fourth which only appears and is the only one you can get if you do agree to work with her. The fourth is actually arguably the greatest downer ending out of all of them. It's the one with the most fatalities and the least actual you know, hope involved. In the other ones there are considerably more survivors. But that's deception and that's the way I play the game. So if you enjoy this sort of mindless, sadistic, or mindful sadistic violence, I suggest you play one of the several games in these series. There's about five of them now. I'm done. Fuck you all. Good night. We'll see if I ever do another one.